So, in the last video, we learned about texture overlays and how much they can help. But they, you can overdo them too. So remember, all of these different dodging, burning adjustments, you can always play with their opacity. They're just special effects you can use, just like the smoke machine for a, for a high school musical. You know, you decide how much you want. How much you want to obscure, how much you want to use. And I might move those cupcakes because I don't like that edge touching the other edge of the cupcake. That's called a tangency in design, unintentional focal point. So I'm going to take those cupcakes, that little cupcake tower, turn off auto select. And I'm going to move them down. Yeah, that's a lot better. Okay. So now I've got my creature scape. I'm going to save it, of course, first as a PSD with all my layers, with all my options. This has got not just the landscape layers, but now it's got a creature in it, and it's got dodge burn overlay layers, and it's got texture fills. Lots to play with here. I've cropped it so that my creature takes up at least 25% of the overall image. So again, we don't want creatures hidden in the background. And now to put it to canvas, I need to save it as a copy, right? I can do it under save as, but it's easiest to just say save a copy. Keep the same name, but change the format to JPEG. And that will flatten it for you. Do not flatten your PSD. Just save it as a JPEG to the desktop. That will flatten. I can change the little slider here so that it's less than five pixels or five megabytes, not five pixels. If I click on preview, it will tell me. So it looks like at a quality of 10, it will be right at the sweet spot for putting to canvas. Then I go to the proving ground assignment and I start a post by clicking on reply and putting my name. and find it from my desktop. Here it is, the JPEG. I mark that orange because it's my online format. So I have my PSD as yellow, my working format, my JPEG as my orange online format, and I size it to fit with my name like a museum piece with its label. And then I hit post. But I'm not quite done because I also need to post the non-destructive overlay layer. And then I need to do the other requirements of the rubric. But we'll do those beginning of next class. Give everyone a chance to really focus on matching your creature's anatomy and matching their light direction. So how do I post this? So this is what we do. We simply take the overlay layer from the background and we set it to normal mode. That shows us all of the overlay choices that were made, where the dodge and burn is happening, what texture lays are happening on top of it. I can do it on my creature too, set that to normal mode. And then I save this as a JPEG with a different name. So save a copy. I'm going to call this Carl Overlay Proving Ground 1. Not as Photoshop, but as a JPEG. Then save. Then I can close this, and I am not going to save it. Or I'll do it another way. Cancel. I could say don't save because I already saved it as a PSD. But all I need to do to get it back to my PSD is turn both of the overlay layers back to overlay mode. And remember, that's why I marked them gray and labeled them so they're easy to find. And there it is. So now when I close it, I can also save it, and that will save my PSD. So let's put that one up. So to put that, I use the three little dots to edit my post. And before my finished I'm going to show that I learned how to use 
the skill of non-destructive overlay layers, which I'll mark gray here as a JPEG. We don't need a PNG because it's filling up a full rectangle. We don't need any transparency. PNGs take up more space. And now I've got one aspect of the rubric for my first proving ground finished. So I'll label it, I guess, so that can help. We're trying to get that done by next class. and finished creature scape. But we still need to add things to it for the other part of the rubric next. And these are both required elements. And like I said, some of you are gonna have a creature that's easier to make blend into your environment than others. Mine was not too difficult, but I still want you to show that you've learned all the new skills. How to dodge and burn it on an overlay layer that's non destructive. And this is how you prove it to me by setting those, those layers to normal mode. Yes, so remember, to keep everything organized, I'm going to go to my folder, and I'm going to create a new folder that's called Proving Ground Number One. And then I take the things off of the desktop and put it on. Okay, in our last five minutes, I'm going to show you a resource to help you understand question of the day two for further reflection. You're going to find it on the home page of the class. Let's see, where are we? So, if you look at the questions of the day link on the home page, even though they're part of the unit modules, you will see that underneath question of the day two, along with a, a good informed illustrator article about this issue in digital art today, I give you best practices to-do list <laughs> that was made with previous students, right? So you might want to add to this for yourself or change it for yourself, but this means that anytime you use other people's pixels in your work, 
This is the best practice. You first determine the usage rights. And if you can't find anything, you must assume that the, the pixels are fully copyrighted in someone else's property. Second, you need to transform, originate, or license them. So you can pay for other people's pixels and get the rights to use them. You can transform them so much that they are unrecognizable to the original creator. Or you can just decide, I'm not going to use their pixels. I'm just going to be inspired by them and make my own. Right? And then number three, make sure that you double check that your work is not derivative of the things that you use, the copyrighted material you used. Because if it is, then you are liable. And then if you're not sure, and even if you are sure, a good fourth step is to get an outside point of view on it. So you show a friend of yours, this is what I made, but I used this image as inspiration and as some of my reference pixels. Do you think that the original creator of this could recognize any of their work in my final? And it should be an unambiguous no <laughs> before you use it as your own professional work. So that's the really simple best practices, best practices to-do list for using OPP, other people's pixels. All right, now with your group, and this is still going to be recorded so it can remind you, we're going to go to a future unit module, which is unit eight for our group presentations. And you are allowed with your group to pick any topic that is a contemporary digital art discipline that your whole group is interested in researching, except for these two. You cannot do 2D digital animation and you cannot do 3D modeling for video games. Why? Because we'll talk more about this. I give you a full sample presentation on both of those. And they're kind of overdone topics. So what are you going to do with your group? You're going to take a topic and then you're going to find seven to, I want to say seven to 10. It could be as many as 15 examples from professional practice of that. So this is digital art being used for 2D animation. And then you're going to find information that goes with each of those examples. And then you're going to write a one page curatorial essay explaining what you find interesting about this topic, right? So there's stuff for your good writer to do. There's stuff for your person that's good with Google Slides to do. And it's everyone's job to find good examples and good information about those examples. But the first thing you need to do is to pick your topic. So go ahead and work with your groups to do that. And then where you post it, you can put that underneath your group because no group can can um, present on the same topic, right? So you claim your topic by writing it as a reply underneath your groups. So we have green group, we have gray group, blue group, etc. So go ahead and discuss that with your group and I'm here to answer questions.